for the last week or so, I've been silently, very silently, cruising around in a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. So this is a hybrid and it's a plug-in hybrid, so you get to plug it into the wall at home and charge the batteries. Mitsubishi say that you can get about 30 miles on an electric charge. Most people I've spoken to think it's more like 20, but still the idea is that you go home, you charge it, and then you've got 20, 30 miles of electric range. This is also one of the most technical cars I've driven. There's, there's so much technology crammed into this thing and so many different things to, to keep an eye on, to keep focused on, different buttons, different modes, different things that you can, you can change to make it more efficient, more powerful, or just drive slightly differently. It's got a two litre four cylinder engine. Nought to 60 is 11 seconds. Reasonably slow, but when you're in a car like this, as big as this, and as supposedly economical as this, are you really gonna be doing nought to 60 times? Really? So first things first, it can run in complete EV mode. So as I said, you get about 20 miles, or, or 30 if you go with Mitsubishi's figures, of electric driving. The next thing from that is series hybrid. So that's where the petrol engine turns on and that starts to send power to the batteries to charge them up whilst the batteries are discharging to the wheels. So the engine powers the electric batteries and the batteries power the wheels. The next step from that is when you put your foot down and the engine forgets about the batteries, sends all its power to the wheels, and the batteries also send all their power to the wheels. Now because it's a hybrid, you'd expect the fuel economy to be, to be pretty good, and according to Mitsubishi, it is. The claimed MPG combined figure for this is 159 miles to the gallon. That's crazy. For a car this big, so it's got five seats, it's four wheel drive. It's got quite a big boot, although the batteries are in the boot, so they take up quite a bit of space, but when you look at it, this is a massive car, and yet it's supposed to do 150 miles a gallon. That is incredible. However, because there are so many technical things going on, I don't know whether I'm able to get the most out of it. And I've been trying. I've been driving the way I would get do an economy run in any other car. And so far, the best I've been able to do has been between 50 and 60 miles to the gallon. Now I don't know whether I'm doing something wrong because as I've said, there's so much stuff going on. In all honesty, I probably think I am doing something wrong and maybe I'm, I'm not using the, so there's an econ, uh, eco mode button on the, on the dashboard here that's supposed to help improve your MPG. I've been using that, but maybe there are other things going on in this car that I should be making better use of. So there's a button down here um, called charge. And when you press that, if it's in full EV mode, it will then turn the engine on to charge the batteries. So normally to charge the batteries, you have to have a bit more throttle, but that charge button just turns the engine on and starts to charge the batteries. There could be a time when I'm supposed to use that to get the most out of it, but because I'm not a Mitsubishi engineer, I don't know how to use it properly. I think genuinely that could be one of the reasons why I can't get the mileage that this claims. I'm just not clever enough or I haven't spent years developing this car to know the ins and outs of it. Anyway, while I haven't been able to get the figures, I'm sure you'll be able to get closer to it if you live with it, if you really try to understand and learn more about it and, and you know, I don't know, maybe Mitsubishi do classes. I don't know, that might seem like a good idea because as it stands, I'm struggling to get that mileage, but I'm sure you can get closer. Whether or not you'll be able to get 150, to be honest, I think that's unlikely because I'm guessing Mitsubishi would have got their figures on a test track, under certain conditions, all the usual stuff that car companies do to get better figures. Some other things in this car. Behind the wheel, there are two paddles. There's an up paddle and there's a down paddle. Usually, in a car with an automatic gearbox like this has got, you expect this to be something to do with the gearbox. The paddles have nothing to do with the gearbox at all. These paddles decide how much resistance there is in the electric motors. So as you're coming down a hill and in a petrol car, if you lift off and you're still in gear, the engine is doing some of the braking for you. It's the same thing with electric motors here, but you can change the resistance of the electric motors and therefore regenerate more energy from the braking. So you can help charge the batteries faster and more. So if I was coming down a hill 
and I wanted to brake a bit more, I can pull this paddle on the left and there are five settings to the how, how much regenerative braking you've got and bit by bit I can increase how much braking there is and it's not like I'm putting my foot on the brake or my brake lights are coming on because they're not, which could cause problems I admit, it's just upping the resistance in the, in the motors and then charging the batteries more so you can basically charge your car for free if you go down a hill. So would I buy an Outlander PHEV? Um, if I'm honest, I don't think I would. I, I like the fact that with this car, you can charge the batteries, you know, at home or as you're driving along, you know, through braking or just by pressing the charge button. Then when you get to a city, you can silently cruise around and it is so silent. It's so quiet, in fact, that there's a noise that the car emits to let pedestrians know because otherwise you would kill someone. But I don't know whether the battery technology is far enough yet that you could, that I'd, I'd want something like this. It is amazing, the technology on it is incredible and as a calibration thing to work, to get everything to work together the way it does is absolutely incredible. But I don't think at this stage I would want to, to own one. This is a middle of the range spec car and it costs £41,000. A normal Outlander you can have for 10 or, or quite a bit more actually, grand less. So it's very expensive. It's, you've got to make a bit of a choice really. If, if you're interested in this technology and you know you're going to be using this car a lot in cities and you quite like the idea of just being able to plug it in and charge it at home. Because in theory, if you've got fuel in this and you only live six, seven miles away from work or something, you could charge it at home, drive to work on electric power, drive back on electric power, and never have to put fuel in. And then when you did go on longer journeys, you've got the fuel to back you up. But even so, it's quite a lot of money.